Hi, this is Hannah, and I am pleased to present my newest furniture flip. I got these two nightstands off of Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. Ran across town for them. Like, I just thought they were so rustic and cool. So, of course, I have to wash them. I got really hot water in there with some Dawn Dish detergent. And I won't show you wiping the whole thing down as much because it's... I have a lot to focus on, but this is just me like getting it cleaned out. It's so much to clean out. They've been in the garage, they've been in someone else's garage and in the corner, getting spider webs on them. So it's a lot. I did have to change the bucket water and clean it out about twice. And I found some things, you know, you look and then you start seeing stuff that's wrong with it. So this needed some wood glue and I'm gonna clamp it shut. Um, I will say that I did not do it correct the first time. Um, excuse me, I didn't squeeze the clamp as tight as it should have been. So after an hour, I actually had to repeat this process that I did, which was not fun at all, but um, so when you look at me doing it this time, it's just like, I see all these errors that I didn't do it right. It should have been squeezed so tight that you can barely see the crack, but I didn't realize that. So I thought, okay, let me just get my sander out with my 80 grit sander and just sand this top off. But then I realized it's just not kind of going anywhere and I said okay maybe I should have um, used a stripper first because this stain is really deep deep in it and then it had that shine to it like the polyurethane top coat and it was just I was just struggling to get it off and so I stopped and switched over to a stripper and of course I had issues with that because I was not wearing my mask and stripper is extremely strong and not only I was just choking myself out and nervous and trying to get done, I noticed that my little applicator was coming apart and it kind of freaked me out that it would fall apart so fast and so easily and I tried to hold my breath couldn't really breathe I should have had this doing this either outside I should have opened my garage door just having the door to the basement was not enough to get enough air to do this process and I <laughs> regretted it so much and I didn't even do it correctly because after I placed it all on there I did not even cover it up I just kind of walked away for 15 minutes and just got out of there but it was definitely not worth it not worth it at all and I'm trying to shed all the bottles I have about two bottles and I'm just trying to clear the area so that there won't be any extra smell around so I came back and started scraping it I'm using a plastic scraper here and it's just like uh I mean, something is coming off, but I see why it took so long, because it's just so many layers. Um, I cover my face with my shirt. You would think that I would have a mask or something around, but I have one now, because <laughs> I couldn't deal with that anymore. And then I got the afterwash, which I'm going to tell you, it smelled bad too. It reminded me of just straight, like rubbing alcohol. It was just strong. And so I was just like, what? But I'm gonna be honest, I did not, I don't know if I read the afterwash one. I just figured, okay, let me just wash it off. So this was a mess. I had used two different rags between the stripper and the afterwash. And I did not want to um, well, use them again. They smelled pretty bad, and I was pretty nervous about that. Um, sorry about the table shaking. 
um, yeah, I had the camera stand on the table and I just was trying to get the smell off of that. So now I have water and soap and I'm re-washing it. And I'm saying to myself, this is not what I'm gonna do for the second nightstand. Not happening. I'm just gonna have patience and get through it with the um, sander. So afterwards I noticed it was still residue and I said, okay, it's wet, but let me just scrape up this residue as much as I can off of here and try to make the best of uh, the stripper. And so that's what I'm doing, just taking off as much as I can. And so, hey, it's dry and I'm back to sanding again. So, what did I really do with the stripper? I don't know. I would say it did not help me too much because I didn't use it for the second one. <laughs> and um, in the past, um, using the sander usually makes, while well, it's vibrating, it usually makes my hand numb and stuff after a while. So I was trying not to do that. But I'm, I'm much better at it now, so I don't really feel that vibration in my arm or numbness but oh the, the wood is what is starting to come through um I like that it's solid wood but it has that builder's wood look that you can just buy so I really wanted it to look more rustic so I'm kind of like in my head thinking of what I can do to make this look more rustic farmhouse And so now I'm ready to start the second one. And I learned my lesson. I'm just going to sit there and take my time with my 80 grit sandpaper and just work this thing. And it did take some time. If I could equate how long it took, let me think. Hmm, under an hour. It took under an hour. So it could have been like about 35, 40 minutes. I did have a time lapse for when I was using it, but I'm not sure altogether. I just know I had to take my time with it. It was just really, really adhering to the wood switches so I must have took a break and now I noticed something on this um, nightstand because I wanted to sand all around it to kind of scuff sand it and I noticed like a big kind of piece was kind of missing so I decided to you know put the wood filler let that one just dry and then I can go back to working on the other nightstand that's kind of what I did, kind of tag team it, try something out on one, figured out what I needed for the other, started one thing, glued one, now I'm wood filling another. Yeah. So this one's dried and I just kind of grabbed a sander, just gonna kind of square it out which it was pretty easy, pretty simple. So now I am back to these, the other nightstand and just trying to just take my time and just put in the work. Try to sand this. I changed it to make sure my 80 grit stayed strong. Um, I can't imagine when people do 120. Okay, this time lapse was 15 minutes. So it wasn't so bad. 
um, I'm still sanding because I want it to be bare so that I can do my own thing with it. I want it to be completely bare and clean. And so now inside of the, I guess, slits, you can see there's still um, stain in there. So I got my little, you know, hand sander and that what's on that pad, I believe is 60 grit. I got 60 grit for that one, so it's pretty tough. I've used it for a little bit, so it may not be as strong, but it's still pretty tough. And now I'm using 320 because they're not soft yet. And so this is something I don't always did in the past, but it's, it's very important to kind of soften up the piece. And I couldn't believe that it was so soft. I think I was going a little crazy over it, yeah. But it felt like butter. It was just so soft once I just kind of sand across it. I really wish I would have used a dry cloth and not a damp one. I do believe the damp cloth kind of took away from some of the softness and so I believe I did later on, not on camera, I don't think I did it. I had to just rub it a little bit more when I was um, ready to start staining because um, using a damp cloth did take away from that softness. There's a lot of sand stuck in between the crevices. And I, I believe I cut some of that out because it was just too much cleaning up. And yeah. So I decided to put some tape around the edge because it's, I'm going for a two-tone effect and I didn't want it to get, you know, to the lower part. I didn't want it to get too messy. Um, I was going to do my best anyway. Okay, this is what I'm using. I got this new um, brush from Bare Paint. It's like an oval chalk brush. And then I got an angle brush just in case. I have my sander ready. I have um, the, the stain is going to be special walnut. I have the bare and satin black. And I have the top coat. I mean, I got a damp cloth. I got a dry cloth. I got gloves. And in this little pail, I have like a clear plastic and that's what I'm gonna use. And I forgot about the opener and the stick that I'm gonna use to stir it. When I first opened the paint, I was disappointed because it looked like charcoal gray though i do love charcoal gray i wanted it to be black the the legs um i was so pissed off the whole time but i paid for this paint and charcoal gray is still a pretty color so i just went ahead and decided to use it um, I wanted to kick a fuss and go back to Home Depot and be like, why is this gray and not black? But then when I looked online, just the images, it does look like gray. It's, I guess it's their version of an off black, but it's just kind of disappointing because it looks like gray. It does not look black. But um, at the time, I kept thinking maybe when I put it on, it'll look darker. You know how you say to yourself, oh, let me just put it on. Maybe it'll look more like what I was thinking. But right here is when I was falling in love with that brush. Like I've never used this kind of brush or thought a brush could be so special. But <laughs> this kind of brush with this ovalness to it and roundness to it is so cool i was going a little crazy so i said let me get this thing closer so you can see what's going on here and brushes are very important so i just was 
in love with this brush. It was a different feel to it too. I felt like my wrist was doing a lot of twisting. I couldn't, I don't, can't imagine how I can describe it. Like my wrist was not feeling so great in the end. Maybe it's me, please tell me if it's me, but it was just brushing on so well. I didn't need a lot of product, you know. I just had it right at the end of the brush the way it should be. And it just spread so well. I just, I don't know, I just loved it. What can I say?
So I'm doing a little bit of scuff sand with the 320 just to kind of smooth it out. Um, the first coat is finished and I'm just preparing it for the second coat. It's already dry for probably about two hours. And so after I wiped it down, I'm just jumping right onto the second coat. Now it's turned the other way around for the third coat because when you flip it back around, you'll see little things that you missed. And so this is when I just, after it dried, and you can see I have a change of clothes, it's the next day, so I decided to flip it and work on this final kind of coat, but the third coat don't need as much. And then now I'm working on the top stain. Right now I wanna kinda just do kinda placement to get some depth to it. It just looks kinda plain, so I wanna just darken only certain sections with the stain and then let that dry and do the rest. I just kind of want to bring out some character in it. Um, I wanted to have a rustic look and I didn't want to beat it up for it. I just kind of wanted to have the look on top. And of course, I'm going to do my thing on the bottom to give it a look. I watched a lot of tutorials, even though I'm not doing anything they said, it's just, it was helpful just to see what people are doing. But, you know, I'm trying something different. And <clears throat> I can't even really tell you too much of what I did because it took a lot of adjusting to get it to look how I wanted it to look. I started with the special walnut and just kind of placing it around then um, well I had to do a few steps I don't want to be too far ahead of it So this is the second one. I just kind of showed what I stained, which I did adjust a little bit. Now I decided to try to lighten up the second one. So I mixed a little bit of weathered oak and a little bit of natural with the special walnut. And I'm gonna tell you, it didn't really do much because when I put the second coat on and wiped it off, it looked almost even. So that wasn't something I was happy about so then I grabbed my dark walnut and put it on the parts that I wanted darker and then took it off and this is how it happened with the dark walnut and stuff but I still have adjusting to do right now I'm just kind of using um, about 120 grit on the sander just to kind of rustic it up a little bit around the trim to give it a more aged look and little bits and pieces. I still want to look neat. I didn't want to look totally broken up. I just liked it to look a little bit edgier. So that's what I was doing and then cleaning it off. Um, I wanted to do the base with wax and do the top part uh, with polyurethane. So I was just getting it prepped. I decided to try this bare wax paint before. I've tried it before on a big piece and I had given up because it was just too big and I just did the top. So this one, I decided to use the cloth and rub it in and I felt like, oh, maybe this will make this darker because I really still was wanting it to be black. And I was like, oh, that's not happening. And then it was kind of difficult using it the way I'm using it. So I turned around and switched to a brush. Um, I did have a chalk brush all the way upstairs 
that I could have used, but I used the oval one and it wasn't quite the right one. But that wasn't the biggest thing about it. Um, when this dried, it was white pieces of, of the wax just sticking in certain cracks. And so that was very disappointing. Um, so I, I just got to leave the wax alone for a while because it's just not working for me. Um, this is the top coat. I just kept it clear and you can see in the top I've done some work with the sander. What I did was after all of the um, stain dried, I um, sanded it a bit. But this is the finished look. Please like and subscribe for more inspiration.